There are a variety of scenarios that determine the impact thermal throttling has on your system. Case selection, cooling solution, and airflow are the three main factors to take into consideration. I received a lot of comments about my GPU temperature, and today I'll be talking about the old and new cooling solutions I tried. My RTX 180 Ti has a heat killer water block installed with Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut Thermal Paste. My GPU gets cooled through an external radiator, as seen in this clip, the tubes go through a PCI bracket and into the cooling unit outside the case. Let's go ahead and start talking about my first external radiator, which I dumped after less than 2 years. My first cooling solution is Alpha Cool's Ease One 360 external radiator. It's an all-in-one package with the pump, reservoir, radiator and fans. It has an XT45 full copper 360 radiator, which is very good, and 6 fans and push-pull running at 1100 RPM. Now the first issue, dust gets collected easily at the fan grill. It's not easy to clean, since there are no removable dust filters. The second issue, to have full control over the fans or make the pump quieter, you have to use this cable which basically downsteps the volts from 12 to 7.5. The unit has good reservoir, you can easily refill the fluid from the top. Now the third issue is the two DCLT pumps at the bottom of the unit. They don't have enough power to run water through big tubes. Also, these pumps die fast and that's why I had to use a D5 pump from EK as seen here. And now that brings us to the fourth issue, which is the noise. The heated fluid is put through the entire radiator and into the reservoir, and then back through the radiator and into the PC. The fifth and major issue with this external radiator is cleaning and changing the parts. As seen in this video, opening the unit takes time and effort. You will need to remove all the panels and cables to reach for the fans and the radiator. Let's first test this external radiator before comparing it to a new cooling solution. Before starting the test, I'll have the ambient temperature set to 18 degrees Celsius or at around 65 degrees Fahrenheit. The external radiator will be connected to my RTX 2080 Ti only and it will be overclocked. The core voltage will be at 100%, power limit at 130, core clock at 105 and memory clock at 900. The idle temperature of the GPU is 23 degrees Celsius. I will be running Unigine Heaven for an hour at extreme preset and ultra tessellation. After one hour the GPU max temperature was between 42 and 43 degrees Celsius, which is excellent since the card is overclocked. Alpha Cool's Ease 1360 is definitely a good cooling solution, but not without its flaws and poor design choices. So it's now a good time to look around for a new placement. After a few days of searching online for possible solutions, I found out there are a limited number of ready-made external radiator solutions. Some of them are still on sale and some of them are discontinued. Coolant's Alpha Cool and Aqua Computer are the major players and all of them have the same issues. Most, if not all of the ready-made external radiators develop pump issues as well as leaks inside the units. That's until I found Spotswood computer cases. Rick, the guy who owns the business, makes all kind of housing, cases and stands for the PC. And yes, radiator stands as well. I emailed Rick with what I exactly want, which is this 5 years old kid drawing on Microsoft Paint. My idea was to have a radiator stand that can take a fan controller, a 560 radiator with fans and push-pull, 
a SFX power supply to power the fans and fan controller, and a reservoir on the side. After two weeks of emails and diagrams, Rick finally sent me this clip, which made me happy. After a few weeks Rick shipped the case and arrived to me with no damages. The packaging and the bubble wraps kept the case safe throughout his journey. So let's get the bubbles wrap off and see what we got here. The stand comes with four panels, top, front and sides. I decided not to have a back panel to lower the cost of the stand and make sure no hot air gets trapped inside. Rick also attached a small plastic bag with some PSU and fan controller screws as well as the necessary tools to remove the screws. The first part I'm going to install is the fan controller from Lampron. The FC8 fan controller have 8 knobs to control the fan speeds, which is exactly what I want to control every fan individually. The controller also have changeable LED lights, which can be customized for every channel. The fan controller can easily be fitted into the stand by using these screw holes. Next is the radiator. I went with Alphacool's XT45 full copper 560 radiator is the big brother of XT45 360 version, supporting four 140mm fans instead of three 120mm fans. Another reason I went with this radiator is the fact that it's full copper since the water block in my PC are also copper. Before using any radiator, make sure to use distilled water to flush out any manufacturing particles or loose materials. And this is why you should always flush a radiator. For the fans I went with Noctua's Chromax NFA14 fans. These fans are quiet and are excellent for static pressure use. The fans also come with anti-vibration pads in six different colors. Cable management was not an issue since I can route the cables from the side of the case. EK's Res X3250 Lite is my reservoir choice for this project. I've used a lot of EK's products before and never had any issues. The reservoir can take up a good amount of cooling liquid and has good flow.
Finally, the external radiator is ready to be tested, but first, I'll need a cable to jumpstart the power supply every time I want to use it. I found this leaf jumper switch, which connected to the power supply 24 pin cable. After connecting the switch, the radiator stand worked perfectly. For comparison, here's a shot of both stands, and look how small Alphacool's ES1360 external radiator is next to the new stand I've made. With the power test going as planned, let's do a leak test. I filled the unit with Alphacool's Cape Calvin Catcher cooling fluid and connected the tubes to the deep pump I already had. Here's the tube going out to the RTX 2080 Ti and this one with the hot water coming back into the radiator. The cooling fluid then is pushed from the radiator to the reservoir. Leak's test went successful, and I made sure there were no bubbles present in the reservoir before going into the thermals test. Ambient temperature is set to 18 degrees Celsius, or at around 65 degrees Fahrenheit. The same overclock values for the previous test will apply here, with the only difference is the idle temperature, which is at 21 degrees Celsius, 2 degrees less than AlphaCool's E1 360. After one hour of running Unigine in heaven, the highest recorded temperature was 34 degrees Celsius, around 9 degrees lower than AlphaCool's E1 360 radiator. Lastly, the noise test. Let's go back and hear the sound of AlphaCool's E1 360 external radiator before hearing the new unit running. The 560 external radiator I built was an excellent investment, I won't need to buy any water cooling parts for every PC I'll build, no need to buy big and expensive PC cases to accommodate large radiators, and most importantly, I'll keep my PC parts safe whenever I need to clean the water cooling loop. So is this worth to cool a single PC part? No, don't be ridiculous. A large radiator like this one is good for cooling the whole PC. I'd recommend going with a smaller radiator if you need to cool a single part in your build. AlphaCool's E1360 radiator might be a cheap option to buy, but this doesn't mean it'll work better than a custom solution. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and keep an eye on new benchmark videos.